I was standing here with Celeste from Manchester, correct? Yes. And um, you had some thoughts. Uh, you were recently over at a state house hearing, and you had some concerns about what you've been seeing at the state house, which are not super new, but I think they need new attention. Tell me a little about that. Well, my main concern was when I was there, I saw that everybody who was testifying for the medical marijuana bill um, took time out of their own life, left their work, their family to, to do bill, this because they were, were passionate um, about it. Police officers and the people who were, who were against on duty and being paid to be there. Well, what, what made you sure that they were being directly paid for that exact time? I, I'm not certain, but if I had to put money on it, they were. Were they in uniform? Yes. So you had to pay for the uniform, <laughs> nothing else. Exactly. Um, and um, did, why do you think this is bad for, I mean, you think it's bad for the democratic process or for liberty? What, what is exactly your main concern with it? Um, it's bad all around because we make a lot of sacrifices to try to change the system make people freer and um, they are showing up on the on the job and we don't even know what they really believe uh, personally and I think the um, system's rigged. Yeah well it's definitely, it's definitely rigged. <laughs> <laughs> um, to put it mildly. Right. Um, did you hear that, you know, what is the most outrageous thing you've heard, like, a cop say at one of these hearings that you can think of? Uh, Off the top of your head, you can't think of anything? No, because it's been a, a few years. I've, oh, okay, so it wasn't I've, I've, uh, I've lost, uh, interest. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I've lost interest in actually going to the hearings, you mean? Exactly. Really? So, what, what do you find that, that you think is the more effective activism that you're drawn to after getting disillusioned with that? Mm -hmm. I think, um being honest, um, telling people how you really feel. And the first, the best way I think to advance um, liberty is to be a good person, to um, continue to grow and to develop skills. And um, uh, as Michael Cloud said, um, to remember that you will be the first libertarian prob most likely that anyone will meet who's new to libertarianism and that you have to um, be a good person first. Okay, so you're thinking like your activism is just more on a one-on-one -on -one level? Yes. Yeah. At this point. It, well, you know, it's always evolving. I kind of feel sad though. That you, I feel like in a way that kind of lets them win, you know, when you stop going. Um, and I, what I try to do is just find different ways to go. Like, if I go and I find that being there in a certain capacity is not useful, I just go and function in a different capacity. All right, so as expected, there's a different story unfolding here today uh, before I get to the spending cap. Thank you for being here. Oh, all right, thank you. What's your name? My name is Sarah. Okay, anyway, Granite State Progress? No, sorry. Okay. Are you with a coalition of groups? Or? Uh, well, sir, this is actually sounding like a pre-press interview, so I'd like to hold off. So you guys are you're trying to keep anybody from talking to the press, is that right? No. You know, like now what I'll do is I generally will not sit through a hearing. I won't even testify, but I will stand outside the hearing with my camera, and I will conduct ambush interviews of authoritarians as they walk out and confront them about what they said and make them defend themselves. Now, are you trying to subvert the uh, legislative process by using bureaucracy to regulate homeschoolers? Is that a yes? That's why I'm on my way to a meeting. Could I talk to you about this later? I'm not with a camera in my face, no. Of course, they usually just freak out about the camera being there. That's even more interesting, so... <laughs> <laughs> but you told me you're a little shy, so maybe you're not going to do that. <laughs> right. <laughs> Probably not. But I do wish more people would do it. I think the ambush interview is one of the most important tools that we have. Is um, you know, and again, I wouldn't really, it wouldn't be ideal to ambush. I'd rather have a pre prepared thing. But that's the only way they'll let you talk to them in many cases. Your activism is um, is hardcore, and and but do you do you think they are going to change out of um, guilt or shame or embarrassment? Um, I I know you're hoping they will, but. Will they? No, I don't have any interest in changing them. I mean, it'd be nice if I could, but I don't think that's the goal. That's not the primary goal. Ga Gandhi found out he was trying to change the British. What he found out was the British didn't care 
but the public that was watching cared. The people who were watching what he did from the sidelines, they cared and got active. Okay, so it's more <clears throat> to change other people's minds and not the person you are ambushing. Mostly, most mm -hmm. people aren't going to change their minds because you put a camera in their face. <laughs> so. They'll just get more pissed off. <laughs> that's right, but that's okay. Um, <clears throat> we just, just know, I mean, there's no avoiding it. Mm -hmm. That's the way I look at it. But. All right. Well, um, oh, do you have any thoughts? Do you have any thoughts about uh, like which part of the state is is coming along the best as the as the Free State Project moves along, or any or which part you think people should move to? That kind of thing. I think people should move where they feel the most comfortable, and that's what they're already doing. I'm glad that the Free State Project is not centrally um, run and engineered. Um, I think that Free Talk Live is probably the um, most interest, instrumental in getting people here, uh, which I think is great. Um, before, if you ask people how they were turned on to libertarianism, a lot said through the um, Libertarian Party, which is where I'm from, um, and now not so much, but that doesn't mean there isn't a place for them either. I, I think any way that people um, are turned on to, um, to libertarianism is, is wonderful. And for most people, it's a, um, it's a growing process. And um, they might be turned on with just one word that someone says, but then in the end, it may be other reasons why they decide to actually make the move. Do you think it's helpful to have uh, one town, you know, that people concentrate in, especially like a free town? Um, if it happens, great. Um, I, I always think of a couple of founding fathers, and I never remember their names, but one of them says, where there's liberty, that's where I'll be found. Another one says, where uh, there isn't liberty, that's where I'll be found. That and means he's being found everywhere right now. <laughs> <laughs> but some, some people want to be free now, and I don't blame them, and others want to help to make others free, and that's great. And some people do both, and yeah. that's great. At this point, I'm not ready to split hairs on what's, what's a great activism and what's not so great. I think it's what you do yourself um, that makes you the most uh, and makes you the most comfortable is what you should do. All right. Awesome. Well, thanks, Celeste.